Hi, so as we continue our presentations on vaginal infections during pregnancy, I would like to stress that a clear inoffensive discharge, just a little heavier than normal or usual, is quite normal during pregnancy and is brought about usually as a result of the extra hormonal activity we see in pregnancy. And so usually treatment is not necessary except that we need to advise these women on frequent vulval and vaginal hygiene, as well as frequent changing of their underclothing. However, if the secretions they are seeing uh, have such features other than what we've just you know, described, it has such features such as you know being offensive, heavier in nature, then you must advise the woman to seek medical help. And such causes of you know infections include the topic that we are going to discuss today, which is vaginal candidiasis. Now, vaginal candidiasis is an infection which is caused by a yeast and is a type of fungus called candida. Now, these candida are normal flora which are found or which live inside the body in places such as the mouth, the throat, the gut, as well as in the vagina, and also even on the skin. And they cause no problems at all. However, if their environment is altered, then they multiply in number and they lead to the infections that we may see. Now, when these vaginal infections occur or when these infections occur in the vagina we call them vagina yeast infection sometimes also we call it vulvo vagina candidiasis and also we can call it vagina or candida vaginitis now the causative agent as uh, i tried to allude to before is candida albicans which thrives in a more acidic medium and is associated with pregnancy as well as in diabetes. Now, with the epidemiology of this uh, disease, you realize that nearly 75% of all women will report having, you know, vulvo vagina candidiasis at least once in their lifetime and so it's something which is very common amongst uh, women and also young ladies now with the pathogenesis what we see is uh, the overgrowth of these candida albicans is precipitated by the risk factors which we are going to see such as pregnancy now if you are pregnant uh, we say you stand a higher chance of getting vaginal candidiasis due to the hormonal changes which disrupt the pH balance of the vagina. Also, we have it uh, being seen in patients who are immunodeficient. For example, if you have diabetes mellitus, uh, first of all, the diabetes uh, is causing vaginal candidiasis because it causes in immunodeficiency in these uh, patients. But most importantly, it also, uh, as a result of the elevated sugar in the blood of these patients. And so, since the sugar in the blood is elevated, we also find such elevated sugar in the, the uh, va vaginal mucus. And so, it serves as, you know, an excellent environment for the yeast to grow. We also find this in HIV patients since their immune system is already you know reduced and so some of these uh, uh, flores micro flores begins to you know grow and cause infections wherever they find themselves now we also have it in uh, you know uh, the intake of some medications and so if the patient is on systemic or even local as well as topical uh, steroids you know, used in the treatment of other conditions, then it reduces the immune system of this patient and so it 
predisposes this patient to the you know development of vagina uh, candidiasis also patients who are on chemotherapy are prone to getting vagina candidiasis then we also find it uh, in patients who have recently taken antibiotics and what happens is uh, right after the you know use of you know systemic antibiotic for treatment of you know other conditions your the immune system kind of comes down and so it disrupts the environment of a uh, place such as uh, the vagina uh, mucus or mucosa and so the microflora which are found over there tends to grow and cause these infections hormonal contraceptive pills have also been uh, you know attributed to uh, the cause of vagina candidiasis in women now we also see yeast infections being associated with intercourse and it usually increases during the late luteal phase of the menstrual cycle and so when uh, women are menstruating during this period you find that they exhibit more of the symptoms of vagina candidiasis now how do we see vagina candidiasis or how do we you know see the symptoms how do they present basically they present as a white curdy patches on the vagina walls and they kind of try to stick to the vagina epithelium so they are sticky in nature and they appear like cottage cheese and it's typically odorless so these are the symptoms or these are the specific vagina uh, discharges that we see now uh, on physical examination there is also vulva edema and a three and, uh, and erythema and usually the discharge is not so plenty it's a bit you know scanty not so much then the women may also complain of vagina uh, burning sensation as well as itchiness or parietus and also they may be dysuria as well as pain during sexual intercourse or dyspareunia now uh, should this infection be transmitted to the fetus during delivery usually these infants develop you know crush or they get you know uh, eye infections which you know i tried to explain you know before and so it is very important that we must treat this woman of her vagina candidiasis prior to uh, delivery now when we look at the diagram on the right this is you know a, a photo showing how the candida looks like so you can see these white you know, discharges on the vagina wall it looks like cheese over there loosely attached to the mucos or the mucosa of the vagina now how do you diagnose vagina candidiasis it's easy uh, and so we use uh, it's easy to see when we, we see it with our naked eye so we usually diagnose it clinically because of the characteristic or the peculiar uh, discharge that uh, is associated with it it's so distinct however we need to uh, uh, use a high vagina swab to you know uh, to detect the presence of the uh, candida albicans in it we also can do microscopic examination by applying 10% potassium hydroxide to the vagina discharge. When we do this, it improves the visualization of, you know, branching hyphae as well as pores under the microscope. This is usually better as compared to the saline preparation that uh, used to be, you know, done. Now, uh, the vagina pH is usually within a uh, normal range between 4 to 4.5. Now, other diagnostic tests that uh, we can use in detecting uh, uh, vagina uh, candidiasis or the candida albicans include the gram stain as well as culture. Now, in recent yeast uh, infections, more uh, than four uh, symptoms uh, epi or, or episodes in a year then vagina culture should be obtained to identify the presence of a non-albicans species 
an example of this you know uh, non albicans species uh, is the candida glabrata and these species are usually less responsive to the azotherapy and so you may not know which uh, species uh, which is causing the candidiasis and so if the woman complains or has reported uh, or presented with vaginal candidiasis uh, more than four times in a year then you must go ahead to take uh, vagina specimen for uh, culture to identify or to differentiate whether it is candida albicans or candida glabrata so that is it now let's quickly look at how we find the candida albicans under the microscope so uh, under the microscope we find the uh, chlamydo, uh, the chlamydospores, which are you know guarded over here, as you can see over here. Then we also have uh, what we call the pseudo hyphae, which is the branching hyphae, as I talked about. And also you can see the spores over here. So this is basically what we see under the microscope to confirm the diagnosis of Candida albicans. And also in this uh, 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 photo, you can see. You know how the cottage cheese applies or attaches itself onto the you know, mucosa of the vagina and so uh, in, in a summary i found this on the internet i thought it was interesting to show to you everything summed up uh, over here with the risk factors the clinical features and the discharge being shown uh, over here then let's go ahead and treat vagina candidiasis basically we treat candidiasis with topical isols specifically we can uh, use the myconazole or the clotrimazole now clotrim clotrimazole vaginal pastries uh, 100 milligram uh, are inserted nightly for 14 days and alternatively uh, we may use nystatin vaginal pastries or a single dose uh, of oral fluconazole now uh, longer duration of therapy such as 7 to 14 days of topical regimen or even 2 to 3 doses of fluconazole oral therapy every 72 hours is recommended for the treatment of recurrent cases or complicated infections. Now, complicated infections may you know, be seen in women who are immunocompromised and also diabetic patients and also pregnant women who have you know several symptoms you know uh, in a year and so with these patients the first line uh, maintenance therapy uh, for such you know, recurrence is oral fluconazole which is given uh, weekly for six months then in the non-albicans candidiasis, that is, if uh, it is caused by the candida glabrata, then we must give boric acid in a capsule form for 14 days, and uh, it is 70% effective in the treatment of, you know, recurrent uh, vaginal candidiasis. Now, like I said, it's po it's possible that the infant may take this infection. Uh, from the mom as it passes through the birth canal and so uh, should the infection be transmitted to the fetus during delivery you know a troublesome uh, trash or eye infection may develop and it is therefore essential that the mother's infection be cleared before delivery is imminent so the infected infant uh, will also require oral nystatin or eye drops to help treat this infection so uh, I think this is all that I have for you. Thank you very much for your time.